Well, the chocolate industry is really evolving. And I think at this time, all the chocolate on the shelf had just traditional sugar in it. Mm -hmm. And it usually had a lecithin. So some sort of soy lecithin or sunflower lecithin, something in there that would cause a lot of digestive issues for people, but was also a preservative to allow the chocolate to stay on the shelves longer. Um, And I want to know when you were looking into making your own chocolate, how did you figure out what ingredients to use? How did you figure out the cacao so you would get that potent health benefit versus um, some sort of more processed cacao that I would say 10 years ago was much more easily found on the shelves? Yeah, the cacao that we use, it's it represents a fraction of 1% of the total cacao supply worldwide. And I, like I said, I kind of grew up in and around the health industry. So I was very lucky from a relatively early age to make some connections in terms of sourcing and spent a good amount of time traveling around the world, making connections with people uh, in in my early 20s and, and seeking out the most amazing sources of a lot of these different ingredients that I love so much. And in the, the case of cacao was connected with some folks in Ecuador mm. who were not growing it on a plantation. And they were actually forming a network of people who had access to basically wild rainforest lands where cacao was growing and would go and wild harvest the cacao from these places. And so this is right from the beginning, a very different thing, because when you hybridize a plant, like most of the cacao that we see in the world is of two varieties. It's either Forastero or Trinitario. And these are heavily hybridized, designed to grow on a plantation, designed to produce maximum output, designed to grow lower to the ground for easy harvesting. And the quality is not the highest. It's not the worst thing in the world by default, but it's also not really an elite superfood in my opinion. The flavor is also not there. And a lot more of what we see in the world also is a variety called CCN51, which is for absolute maximum output, maximum resistance to any pests or disease, but it has a flavor of what is known as acidic dirt. It is uh, so the 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 big uh, quandary in the cacao world is how do you make the flavor of CCN fifty one work when it should be how do you grow actually a higher quality cacao to begin with? Now with all these varieties, they are mostly uh, heavily hybridized to grow really well in Africa, which is where the majority of cacao production mm-hmm. happens these days. But this we want to grow things ideally by this Taoist principle of DDAO, which says that if you grow something to maximum strength, you're going to want to grow it in the environment in which it evolved to grow because Mm -hmm. it has developed genetically most in that environment to get the most out of that soil, to produce the maximum in that climate. And so where cacao has evolved ancestrally is not Africa. There is no cacao originally in Africa. Uh, They have many other great things, some incredible herbal compounds coming from Africa, but cacao is not one of them. So we go to the original source. And then we process the cacao via fermentation first, and then it's sun-dried and we don't roast it. That's something that we do that's a little bit unique because we want to preserve the uh, integrity of a lot of the heat-sensitive compounds that you might find in cacao. And then from there, it is done in very small batches in a way to really look over it and preserve the integrity. And one of the craziest things is we've managed to have a cacao that is free of mold and mycotoxins. And that's a whole nother rabbit hole we can go down. But um, this really makes for the ultimate starting place to a chocolate because you have the flavor is just totally different when you have something that is grown in mineral rich volcanic soil, as opposed and and living in the wild with that genetic robustness to survive in the wild where it's not protected by a fence and a scarecrow and a monocropped area where all other plants competing for anything are and, and animals are kept away from it. It's out there fighting. It's like if you have a kid who grows up with helicopter parents keeping away anything that could possibly have any kind of effect whatsoever versus, uh, you know, somebody who grew up with a little bit more adversity and had to rise to the occasion. This is cacao that has had to rise to the occasion. And so it it makes for a pretty awesome chocolate 